Should Peerless Assassin owners have buyers? What the? That's the quality you get for 35 bucks, eh? All right, so the Peerless Assassin, this guy. This is arguably one of the best and most popular CPU coolers on the market right now if you can actually find it. It is amazing from every single perspective. But what if I told you that Thermalrite, they've just come out not too long ago with a brand new version of the Peerless Assassin called the Phantom Spirit. It is supposed to get actually more performance than the Peerless Assassin because it has one additional heat pipe and some other really minor changes. And it actually, at some points, costs less than the PA120. Now, is it time for people who bought the Peerless Assassin to have a little bit of buyer's remorse? Well, that's what I wanted to find out in this video because I actually bought this for 42 bucks, which at the time on Amazon was less than the Peerless Assassin here in Canada. So anyways, I wanted to get into all of that, but first, a message from our sponsor. I mean, this new fan is something else with regular and reverse models available to create that clean look without compromising the airflow direction. Like these bottom fans are set to intake, but look like the rest of the fans on the enclosure. It's brilliant. They cleverly daisy chain with snap on bridges and all these bits cover up the uglies. So you never have to worry about the looks or the cable management as it's just one cable. This is what the premium dirge 30 millimeter performance fan should look like. The new Fantix D30. So first things first, and I'm sure that some people have noticed this, is that Thermalrite is busy pressing that F5 button over and over again and literally spamming the high-end CPU cooler market with like an endless string of products. And the Phantom Spirit, that's sort of like indicative of the way they approach things. So this was actually announced last year, but only made its way to North America in about April of this year. There's also three different models of the Phantom Spirit. The PS120 SE, which I have here, the 120 SE ARGB, and finally a slightly more expensive Phantom Spirit 120, which is a clone of the other two. The only difference is its finished top plate that's used to cover the exposed heat pipe termination points and a metal instead of plastic backplate. I'm sure there's going to be a white and matte black version too at some point, but they haven't been announced. On the flip side of that coin, Thermalrite's CPU cooler spamming causes some issues since there's a logjam of dual tower high performance coolers sitting right between the $30 and $50 price points. There's the Peerless Assassin, Frost Spirit 140, sometimes the Frost Commander hits these prices, and now the Phantom Spirit. But I guess the biggest question in all of this is what are the fundamental differences between the Spirit and the Assassin? Because 99.9% .9 of the time when you're looking for a new CPU cooler and Thermal right pops up, both of these guys are going to be there. And they're very, very similar in size, in price, in availability, but they are actually two very, very different CPU coolers. I mean, sure, they're identical in every dimension, except the Spirit is a millimeter shorter, so it'll have the same memory clearance issues as the Assassin. If you use higher modules, you'll need to push up the front fan, and that could result in some cooling capacity being lost. Past that, from a side-by-side -side profile, these are identical as well, with some minor changes in the fin arrangement. Switch to a top view and you'll notice the fin array is vastly different. Whereas the Assassin has a shark tooth look to it, the Spirit uses Thermalrite's newer version with a sectioned step-back profile that's meant to improve airflow channeling through the fins and reduce back pressure. Then there's the increase from six six millimeter heat pipes to seven, and I'm really on the fence about this one. On one hand, the more is better mentality is there, but on modern CPUs, more heat pipes doesn't necessarily mean better performance. We actually saw that in the last roundup with the Frost Spirit just destroying the more expensive Frost Commander despite having one less heat pipe. Like I said in that video, placement of heat pipes is more critical than just throwing more quantity at the problem. You can actually see how the Assassin's heat pipes are all concentrated towards the center of the CPU's IHS, whereas the Phantoms aren't quite as bad as some of the coolers in that last video, but two only make partial contact. 
I also need to talk about the installation kit because it's very well done with color-coded spacers for both Intel and AMD, but I'm not a huge fan of that plastic backplate. They also don't include clips for a third fan. Then again, this is a value-oriented cooler, so I can't ding it too much for those things. And there's also a little bit of a plot twist when it comes to the fans that Thermalright is actually equipping the Phantom Spirit with, because if you look at the technical specifications on Thermalright's website for both the Peerless Assassin and the Phantom Spirit, it's like a copy paste of the fans, but that's actually not what's going on here. So the fans on the Phantom Spirit actually have a revised bearing design and a new and updated motor. So they're going to produce a little bit of a different acoustical profile from the ones that are on the Peerless Assassin. So actually, let's have a listen to these right now. So the Phantom Spirit, it is extremely quiet across its entire RPM range, even when you get up to 1500 RPM. But I also need to have a very frank discussion with you guys about the Peerless Assassin and the way it appeared in previous videos, because as we started retesting and validating its results for this video, because it's so close to the Phantom Spirit, well, there was a couple of red flags that came up. Basically, one of our original samples fans was exhibiting a grinding noise above 1300 RPM. Listening back to the acoustic samples from the original review, it was there, but almost inaudible, so it wasn't red flagged. Though it wasn't necessarily detectable to the human ear, our concern was that our decibel meter was sensitive enough to pick it up. So of course, I needed to validate those findings and I ordered another two Peerless Assassins from Amazon and luckily, neither of them in any way, shape or form exhibited that grinding noise that we were hearing. So what does that mean? Well, overall, the results will be pretty much identical to the old ones that you saw at lower decibel levels. But at the top end, the Assassin is much, much quieter than our original results would have you believe. So instead of hitting 46 decibels, 45.7 to be exact, it actually maxes out at 43.4 decibels. So it's actually better than we'd originally said it was. These new results will be used in all reviews going forward. Getting the most accurate results is so very important to us and I wanted to set the record straight without just updating results and not telling you guys about it. But at the same time, I do wanna have a very frank discussion here because this is not the first time that I've had some issues with Thermal Rights fans. It's the first time that we've had issues with the fans on the Peerless Assassin, but some of their other fans that we're testing right now are starting to exhibit a little bit of, I guess you would call it long-term wear that is raising some red flags when it comes to overall longevity. Sure, the price on these coolers is absolutely amazing, but this is something that we're gonna have to take into account going forward. So with that out of the way, I wanted to start talking about the performance of the Phantom Spirit. Can it actually beat the Peerless Assassin? Starting with gaming, and I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna come as a surprise to anyone. The Phantom Spirit is one of the best coolers we've ever tested at every single decibel level, but it's also a literal clone of the Peerless Assassin. Overall, these are better numbers than the Assassin, but only by a small amount at 41 decibels and lower, though it does pull a bit further ahead at 42 and 43 decibels. And by normalizing things down to 38 decibels, you can really start to see how similar these two coolers really are. Regardless of which one you end up picking, overall performance for the price is absolutely incredible. Now, starting with the full CPU load tests, and the situation is a bit flipped, with the Phantom Spirit getting slightly better temperatures at lower RPM and noise levels. Meanwhile, it ends up being functionally tied with the Peerless Assassin above that. That also places it within a degree or two of the D15, though it still can't come close to matching the Frost Spirit or Assassin 3 in this test. It's interesting because what we're seeing is a literal logjam of thermal right coolers in our charts where four of the top eight heat sinks 
end up coming from the same company. And yet, if you really want the best of the best for 13th gen CPUs, look towards the Frost Spirit, since it offers better cooling while also being within a few bucks of the Phantom Spirit every now and then. Switching over to the clock speeds, and despite getting higher temperatures than some of the other coolers here, the Phantom Spirit ends up with fractionally better results. But then again, the top 10 coolers are all well within the margin of error. Moving on to a higher heat load of 253 watts shows this cooler getting some of the absolute best results we've ever seen. It basically mirrors the D15s and Frost Spirit's numbers while also being about a degree or two better than the Peerless Assassin. The Assassin does close the gap at higher noise levels again, but if you're after the quietest computing experience at an affordable price, it's hard to argue against the Frost Commander and the Phantom spirit here. You can probably see that a lot clearer once we narrow this down to a normalized 38 decibels. There's a pretty serious gap between the best of the best air coolers and all the others. And once again, the Phantom Spirit tops our clock speed chart in a dead heat with the Frost Spirit. But like I said before, the top coolers here are all within our margin of error for clock speeds. So you can consider everything from the new Fuma 3 to the Frost Spirit to have identical frequencies. And removing Intel's limits maxes out all of these coolers from a temperature standpoint, but dialing down a lot further into clock speeds, and we can see a pretty clear pattern emerging. Smaller 120 millimeter designs with less heat pipes like the Peerless Assassin AK620 have pretty much flatlined. That's a clear indication they've reached a thermal saturation point, whereas the coolers with more heat pipes like the Phantom Spirit, D15, Assassin 3, and Frost Commander do much better. As a matter of fact, at lower decibel levels, the Phantom is the best cooler we've ever reviewed in this test. And this also goes to prove that Thermal Right might have found an optimal combination of heat pipe density, fin stack size, and fan performance for the 13900K because it really does feel like this cooler loves higher heat loads. Okay, so the Phantom Spirit, now that we know how it performs, I think it's pretty clear. This is absolutely one of the best CPU coolers I've ever tested. I just feel like I'm saying that in, in every single video, but as I review these things and as you guys suggest new coolers, they just keep on getting better and better and better. Now, the big question here is, do people who bought the Peerless Assassin need to have some buyer's remorse? And I'm gonna say, absolutely not, because this thing, while it is an amazing CPU cooler, in the grand scheme of things, it is not appreciably better than the Peerless Assassin. In addition, for the time being, it doesn't come in that matte black and matte white finish that a lot of people are looking for. So, should you basically sell your Peerless Assassin and buy the Phantom Spirit? The answer to that is absolutely not. It excels though in higher heat loads where that additional heat pipe can really start to flex its muscles. I think regardless of the fact that there might be just a little bit too many of these Thermal Right products all cluster around the same area of the market, we do have to give these guys some credit because I took a step back and I looked back two years ago what we paid for all of those coolers in that budget CPU cooler roundup. And those are some like entry level coolers. Well, the price I paid for the Phantom Spirit is actually less than a lot of those coolers here in Canada. So what you're getting is basically high-end performance for entry-level pricing. And for me, that means that the Thermalrite Frost Spirit gets our damn good value award. I do still have some of those lingering concerns about their fan quality and its longevity, but right now, as it stands with this sample in front of me, this is one hell of a good cooler for an even better price. So anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys. Phew, thank God.